You know this tendency we have to learn and listen to what best practices are, but then we don't apply the tips or we forget about them quickly. And I did that, and that's why I'm going to tell you about 10 things I learned the hard way about watercolor painting and what consequences this had on my progress. Hi, I'm Françoise, and on my channel, I offer tips and tutorials to paint realistically with watercolor, oil pastels, gouache, and more. The ugly stage. Why is watercolor so hard? Looking back at my two-year journey with watercolors, I don't think it's because it's difficult to master it and get comfortable with handling water and drying times. With patience and practice, it always gets better and easier. I think the hardest thing to get past is the ugly stage, because this never goes away. The ugly stage is a long period of time in a painting, or maybe short period, it depends, where it just doesn't look nice, where after a while, you start doubting yourself and end up giving up rather than finishing it. I've been told before, but back then I didn't read between the lines. When you hear things like be patient or things like the painting starts coming together towards the end or layer and add contrast, all this means in fact that the initial strokes and colors on your painting are not always going to look very exciting, especially if you're going for some level of detail and realism. It's true for every medium, but it's even more the case with watercolor. Because colors dry so lightly, because sometimes the beginnings look messy and weird due to the nature of watercolors and because with watercolors we need to add a base layer first and that doesn't look pretty always. The stain or blooms or odd formations that happen very early may look strange now, but it will look fantastic once the painting is finished. Once layers have been applied and contrast added and darker tones on one hand and highlights on the other hand, Small and weird formations from the early layers might not even be there anymore, or else they may add a lot of charm to a painting, so you really have to wait and keep pushing through the whole painting to know. Same thing with a portrait. The first layer looks very odd, flat, boring, and turn, but as you add more layers and refine the darker parts, the shapes and features will start forming before your eyes, if only you don't give up before that, and the feeling when you see it happen is priceless. Practice does make progress and it is worth it. This is the hardest part no one wants to hear about because when we think practice, it's first of all so cliche, but it's also so needed and it also and mostly take a lot of time. And we don't want to do it. I've been there and I'm still in that boat with other things and art that I always procrastinate on because I don't see the end of it. And yet I can tell you from finally diving into watercolors two years ago, after avoiding them, but thinking about them for an entire year, that just starting is the key. And it is satisfying because there's always going to be progress, and if you can be patient enough, you will see it happen. If you're having a hard time and lacking the patience, I would suggest to start following tutorials and classes for fun and more of an instant gratification feeling. For me, Skillshare was a good way to start, so much that I became a teacher on there too. I will link my own classes in the description for a 14-day free access. With it, you can try my classes, but you also can try all others. Once you feel enthusiastic and excited about the act of painting, thanks to the guidance of a class and actionable steps, add the participation to challenges for extra motivation, and you can find plenty of those on Instagram. For me, challenges were always a way to improve my paintings a whole lot. And before you know it, with the excitement of challenges and classes and what you see you're able to create, you fall into a painting routine and from there you're good to go. As long as you start, you don't waste a year like I did and remember that time will not wait on you to make up your mind and it will keep passing by. Reminding myself that is what helped me most to get started. Classes are helpful at every stage of the journey. After it got easier for me to paint with watercolors, I didn't want to take classes anymore for fear it would influence my style and I would paint like my instructors. So I stopped taking classes and I stayed the same with the skills I had then. My progress was slow, a single painting took me forever to come up with and it was just very hard to renew myself and reinvent the wheel in some way. This is why I started taking classes again and very quickly my skills improved and more possibilities came my way when it comes to the techniques and ideas. I believe a good mix is to take some classes to gain some new insight on techniques and thought process but also practice mostly on your own and not solely rely on classes as this will help you develop your style efficiently. The paint you use is not what matters. I used to obsess over having all my supplies being very high quality, 
paper, paint, paintbrushes, everything. But over time, I noticed that for watercolor paints, when you don't sell your art and have it sit in the frame for years, it's totally fine to use student-grade watercolors. They are less expensive than professional paints. They have less quantities for long-term use of a finished painting. For instance, they might fade a bit, but they don't feel or look a lot different on paper, really. So my recommendation here is to play with the paints that you want to try based on the colors you like or your budget without worrying too much about quantity. As long as the brand is established and used by other artists, you shouldn't see your learning practice impacted by this. An example is that every paint I have bought that come from established brands is fine. Once, however, I bought a magazine that came with a super cheap set of what was called watercolors without a name or anything on it, absolutely no information. And that might not always be the best option if you're a little bit serious about experimenting with techniques and wanting to make progress. Use high quantity paper. I repeat this all the time because it is so true. With watercolors, paper is the main thing, in my opinion, that can impede your progress and change the results you're getting. I have heard many other artists say the same as well, so I'm pretty sure about this. You will see a huge difference between the two main types of paper, cheap wood pulp watercolor paper and pricier 100% cotton cold pressed watercolor paper because the latter holds water a lot more, which impacts how well colors flow, mix, and how long you can paint on wet without everything drying and ruining your efforts. In the beginning of my practice, I was using a high quantity paper, but I had other ones to try. I started happily experimenting and following tutorials with a high quantity paper, making good progress, and I left for two weeks on a vacation. When I came back, I decided to try this other cheaper paper, just thinking about it as another watercolor paper. That's all it was to me at the time. Cheaper, yes, but just another watercolor paper. And I think my jaw dropped as I painted on it as clearly something was very wrong. At first I thought watercolors was this hard, that I shouldn't have stopped it for two weeks this early in the learning process. I even felt that maybe I had forgotten the little I learned about and that I could not do without a tutorial. Painting just felt more difficult, it didn't look pretty, I got more stains and unwanted marks, I had a hard time to manage the water as it dried very fast, and the result didn't look encouraging and didn't feel agreeable to paint. I remembered eventually that when I was practicing before my vacation, I had used a different paper. When I tried that higher quality one again, the difference was so amazing I couldn't deny why it was so much pricier. Water control felt way easier, I had better sensations painting, colors looked nicer when dry, and with that, I never went back to wool pulp papers in the last two years and I have no plans to do so. Papers I have tried and love are all 100% cotton, cold press, and 300 GSM papers, and I can recommend Windsor & Newton, Arche, Canson L'Héritage, and Saunders Waterford. And naturally, if you are using wood pulp paper and you feel totally fine with it, if it's getting you the results you want, then that's all matters. But if you're not seeing the results that you want to see, then it might be the paper. Few supplies are enough to create masterpieces. As many beginners and non-beginners, I was tempted to get and try all the papers, all the paints, all the colors, etc. I thought I needed it all to make beautiful paintings. Getting different supplies, Making some mistakes is totally part of the process, so I'm not encouraging you to limit yourself very strictly, as you will need to test and try things to see what you like best anyways. But I'm noticing for myself, so I just want to point it out, that after painting for two years, it's funny how I always use the same five paintbrushes. One flat, two round, two round and pointed. This is because it's what suits me, gets me good results, so I never ever feel the need to use those other fancy paintbrushes I bought before, which is not good, but I can help it. Same with the paper, there are four browns of paper that I mentioned before that I use and that's it. I never buy other types, I have a few sheets of other types I never use, although in the future I might like to experiment on hot pressed paper a bit more, so you never know. And for paints it's the same, once you develop certain habits and preferences, there are a bunch of paints collecting dust. With time, you will also get better at color mixing and you won't need to buy all shades for one color as you can prepare it on your own. You can do it all with a few colors when you're ready. Like I said, I used to aim at owning all the shades for one color. In fact, I noticed that with a watercolor set, I can do anything by mixing colors. 
For instance, a flashy pink can be muted with a little bit of the opposite color on the color wheel. This type of trick can help you create various looks and moods in a painting with one single set. So if right now you cannot afford many options and you feel the pleasure of acquiring high quality paints or a certain shade you like, do not despair and take advantage of this to master color mixing with what you have. The secret to water control is persistence. Water control can be very discouraging as you start. This and color mixing used to scare me and prevent me from getting started. I used to think at some point there was a secret and mysterious tricks artists weren't talking about when it comes to controlling water and getting comfortable with painting, as if there was some secret group or artists who have unlocked the mystery. This is why back then I made videos about my findings since I could not find proper and explicit information about water control and I found it quite discouraging to be honest. You can take a look up here and in the description, but know the biggest trick there is really is to persist and go for it even when it's hard and you will get there, paint many backgrounds and you will understand how to control your water. Take a shortcut with backgrounds. This is your shortcut to getting better with watercolors without wasting time and supplies on complex scenes you might not be ready for yet. Like I just mentioned, paint backgrounds, galaxies, skies and a lot of them. They involve using a lot of water and are excellent to understand watercolors, plus they make for beautiful paintings and from there you can upscale to adding silhouettes and after that you will be able to go for more complex sceneries and it doesn't have to take that long really. Avoiding this type of wet paint on wet paper work will keep the fear of water around you for longer. On the opposite, tackling and mastering the skill will allow you to gain confidence quickly. I'll link my Skillshare Galaxy classes in the description for further practice and up here also. They will help you experiment what you learn in my water control videos with step-by-step -step projects. The talented artists we look up to started small. It is so true and I'm thankful for apps like Instagram to let us see someone's progress throughout the years. Keep in mind also that most people don't show their failed paintings, so it always feels like others are so much better. For instance, I can tell you that I fell quite a lot, but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to come up with a beautiful piece afterwards. When in doubt, remember everyone starts somewhere. The only reason someone ends up where they are is because they didn't let discouragement get the best of them and they kept working and trying. Persistence again is the key. Watercolor doesn't have to be loose, and this is something that bothered me and led to a lot of self-doubt and blocks. The nature of watercolors being that you can create beautiful loose and spontaneous effects, and seeing many use it in this way had me believe for a while that this is how I should paint with them, that few people would find my style interesting. Deep down, you know that isn't true. There are so many people with so many different interests and there are no rules for art, but I think it's worth mentioning as some mediums tend to associate with a certain style, like colored pencils in my mind associate with realism and hyperrealism, but how about trying abstract with them? The point is, do what feels right to you. This is what will take you where you should be heading the fastest. I hope you enjoyed this video and it motivated you to keep practicing knowing that you are able to achieve great skills and mastery of watercolors as well. Why wouldn't you? If so, please like, comment and share this with other creatives, this will benefit as well. And if you're not yet subscribed, you may consider doing so and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all of my upcoming oil pastels, watercolor and gouache videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.